Chandler, this is a closed session. I'm opening this. So, what's going on here? My client has been advised to meet with you in private before you take depositions. What's in the briefcase, Adam? Hush money? Evidence. New evidence that the state has absolutely no case against me. It's Erica. Could you come over to Lennon House immediately? Yes, it's extremely urgent. It's my mother. So, I don't like surprises and I don't like witnesses pulled out of hats. I just give us a half hour in private. Then see if you still have a case against my client. The big cheese and the rat can't be far behind. You better not be wasting my time. Have patience. All will be revealed. I apologize for the inconvenience. No, no. Never explain, never apologize. Right, Adam? Oh, sorry if you don't mind waiting in the outer office while we confer upon. Be my guest. I will be. I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> Hello, Stuart. It's been a long time. How are you? Well, come on. If we're going to do this, let's get it over with. Adam. Stuart, you act like, like you've seen a ghost. Do you know that guy? Well, what has he got to do with Adam's case? Nothing, 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 not a darn thing. Well, you obviously know him. Why are you afraid of him, Sylvie? He, he, he runs the Collinsville Sanitarium. He's my, my doctor. Adams brought him here to put me away. So sorry. examination, I can sign the death certificate. Do you think that Joe was my mother in I truly believe she died peacefully in her sleep. She was all alone here. The roof on her house was damaged in the tornado and she wanted to take a room at the Valley Inn, but I wouldn't hear of it. Mm -hmm. I insisted that she stay here. Rather than a room, a strange hotel room. You were the first one I thought to call. I can handle the necessary arrangements, if you like.
about to see my mother one more time. documented history of mental disturbance. So he's been treated with a variety of mental disorders, right? Well, that's correct. Stewart is what we call an eclectic personality. His emotions are highly charged. Uh, his uh, responses to people and events are unpredictable and often inappropriate. Yet he obviously functions well enough to be mainstreamed back in society. Mr. Fenner, uh, my brother is a simp. Here's the emotional and social skills of an adolescent. The Gloria broke off their engagements because she was in love with me. Stuart reacted like any schoolboy. He read it, he raved, he withdrew into his own private little world. He's completely incapable of understanding the complex dynamics that existed between Gloria and myself, and thus incapable of forgiving me. You're telling me that Stuart implicated you in your own kidnapping as a way of getting even for stealing his fiance. Thank you for saying it for me. Well, it sounds to me like your brother has more in the beam than you give him credit for. Hey, plotting revenge, that requires logic, strategy, a cool head. That's hardly the profile of a simple man. It was a Stuart idea. His fragile emotional state made him an ideal pawn he followed directions perfectly. From who? From store, bargain, basement, P.I. Charlie. Uh-huh. Motive? <laughs> Sweet revenge. Brent and that shrew that I married in haste and regret to this day begrudged me my share of happiness, so they programmed Stuart to say that I kidnapped myself. And then they coached him and on how to speak to my wife, how to, how to say to the police. I, I don't blame Stuart. There's absolutely no malice on his part. He's just... He's too dumb to know any better. circle is smaller now by one. Mona died last night. Oh, Joe. Oh, no. Erica came home from Seattle. She found her upstairs in the bedroom. It was merciful, all things considered. She went in her sleep. How is, um, how is Erica handling? Remarkably well. Uh, I really don't think it's sunk in yet, though. No, of course not. Mona. Mona, go on. How? Oh. How? Oh. How many years will we all together, Joe? Just the best years of our lives. Oh, my sweet soul. Oh. Oh. I... I just, I can't, I just can't imagine Pine Valley without our old friends, you know. I mean, every wedding, every christening, every anniversary, mother was there. Well, I sure don't know what I'm going to do. She ran my life at the hospital. But she did it with such good humor, such style. You know, she holds... She holds such a very dear place in my heart. She was the best kind of friend. She... She never let me feel sorry for myself. <laughs> One day...
one day last fall, I was walking down Main Street. We walked by Kramer's drugstore. There was this big sign in the window saying, Lost our lease. Everything must go. Well, you know me. I started bemoaning the passing of another landmark. And Mona just quietly put her arm in mine and said, Don't look back, Ruby. We have so much to be thankful for. Well... I don't think she'd mind us looking back just this once. She's a great lady. A dear, dear friend. Just this once. Maybe she'll forgive me for not being so brave. I miss her. I miss her already. Oh. All right, Erica, I changed my mind. Now, you're not going to get away from me that easy. I want you to come down here. We're going to get on the phone. Sorry, I just... What's wrong? Did something happen to Erica? No, no, it's not Erica. It's her mother. I can explain. Adam and Dr. Brandenburg were just filling me in on your uncle's psychological profile. What for? Your father believes that Stuart was deluded into filing false charges against him. What? Well, that is just the lowest of the low. How could you do this? Adam trades Stuart to save his own hide. Big surprise. I care very deeply for my brother. All right, Adam, set it to music. You always trash the ones you love. I think I'm enjoying this. I'm doing what has to be done. You're setting up Stuart to take the rap for you the same way you did Alec. You're a fine one to talk. You and Brooke used Stuart to get to me. Here it comes. Deny that you hate my guts. Deny it? After today, I'm going to have it made into a vanity plate. You, Charlie, you resent me because I know that you're not good enough for my daughter. As you're a loser, Brent. Both of you. Sore losers bent on your petty revenge. But it didn't take a mastermind far from it. Quite the contrary. It was a game, a simple game that you tricked Stuart into playing. In keeping with his limited mental abilities. It was simple. Just blame it on Adam. Make it look like Adam kidnapped himself. Well, I couldn't let you get away with that. You had to be stopped, even if it meant exposing my poor befuddled brother's unwitting role in your sick plot. You know, if you went up in flames, I wouldn't spit on you to put you out. If you went up in smoke, I would just gather up all of your ashes and flush them down the toilet. I will never forgive you for the look on Uncle Stewart's face. Never, ever.
don't have to say anything. Just your being here, that's enough. Ruth. Ruth, how sweet of you to come in so quickly. I know how busy you are. Well, honey, where else would I be? I mean, Mona was family, and so are you. I miss her more than I can say. I can't. Dorothy, you, you must be absolutely exhausted, huh? No, no, I'm not, really. I'm not. I, uh, I am surrounded by three of my and my mother's favorite people, and so I feel blessed. I can get the arrangement started, if you like. Yeah, while Joe's doing that, if there's some people you'd like me to call. Oh, look, don't to... think I'm ungrateful. I, I thank you, but I would prefer to handle everything myself. Well, of course, we understand. Thank you. Uh, could you suggest a funeral home? I think Mona used Whitlow's when Charles passed away. Yes, of course she did. Yes, and Dr. Tyler's service was so lovely. I will use them. Mm -hmm. Dr. Martin, uh, do I need a coroner's report? I'll sign the death certificate and get it over to Whitlow's. That should do them. Thank you very much. All right, then. I will call them right away. My name is Erica Kane. I live in Linden House at 137 Lancaster Drive. I'm calling about my mother. Uh, she died here last night, uh, my home, in her sleep. Yes, her name is, is Mrs. Mona Kane Tyler. One day, you and Gloria and Stuart and I will look back on this as a crucible. That we all survived together as a family. <laughs> together. <laughs> intact. Never. Uh, we will never be a family. That happened in your dreams. And in my worst nightmare, I will never pick up a photo album and fondly recall the crazy, hazy days of the summer of 94. You humiliated Uncle Stuart in public. You shot his character down with one clean stab in the back. And why, Adam? Why Uncle Stuart? Because your ego won't let you admit that your pathetic scheme to, to test Gloria was a complete and utter failure? Look at him, Adam! Look at what you've done. Greater love hath no man down his life for his brother. Take a lesson. Well, Stuart, wait. Well, since we seem to have lost our quarrel, I suggest we adjourn. going anywhere just yet. Like something very simple, something very elegant, and definitely a blanket of white roses. I think Eric is holding up very well. I think maybe she's holding up a little too well. No, no, I think that Joe's right. It's just that the reality hasn't hit her yet. People deal with the grief in different ways. Eric is handling it the only way she can. Thank you. You've been very helpful. Erica, honey, why don't, uh, why don't I go out into the kitchen and make us some coffee and some sandwiches? No, you don't have to do that. Well, it's no trouble. No, really, you don't have to stay here and hold my hand. I'm going to be fine. Well, I'd kind of like to stay here to be all right. Jack, that's very sweet of you, but the truth is I have a lot of calls to make, and I do want very much to be alone when I call Bianca. But you will let us know if we can help. Yes, I promise. 
We'll be in our prayers. Thank you. And I'll let you know about the service. Okay. Okay. I'm not in the mood for one of your sanctimonious lectures. I'm just curious. You took the one good thing that you have left in your life and you single-handedly destroyed it. Why? <sighs> the one redeeming feature that you have, Adam, is that you love Stuart. And he loved you unconditionally. I mean, even when you were beyond forgiveness, Stuart always gave you another chance. Well, he's not going to give you another chance this time. Because you've made that impossible. You're beyond redemption. Haley's gone. Stuart's gone. Gloria's gone. What's left? I mean, even if you manage to land on your feet the way you always do, what are you going to go home to? An empty house? An empty life? How does it feel to know that you finally made yourself completely alone? Thank you, Travis. Then I will send a car to pick up both you and Bianca at the airport. Travis? Please don't tell Bianca about my mother. I want to do that myself, in my own way. And certainly not on the phone. I want to tell her in person. Kiss her for me. I will. All right, bye-bye. Oh. Well, I don't have her number. My mother will. Maybe she'll be her close. Water, my mother will always ask for me come. Oh, mother, let your driver's license expire. You're so funny. You can remember every ingredient and every measurement for your famous oatmeal cookies. And you can certainly run Dr. Martin's office like clockwork. But when it comes to your driver's license, I have to remind you.
wonder what Adam would say if he could see that. Oh, you know, I'm sure he'd find a way to blame us. This is my father, I swear. I'll... Hi. Hi. Is Stuart okay? He's breathing, but he's a flatline on the activity scope. We had to come out here and drag him out of bed at 12.15. This from a man who normally is awake at 6. We tried to coax him with Prosta Primavera, but uh, he wouldn't take a bite. I tell you, I've never seen him like this before. I think he has a broken heart. Maybe he's broken, period. Hmm. 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 Stuart! Hey! Hmm. Uh, I don't feel like talking right now. You know what? I don't feel like talking either. <laughs> I think that we have all been through the ringer, and I think I've got a great idea. Why don't you put on your clothes, and we'll take a walk down to the lake and back, huh? Oh, no thanks. Stuart, I promise I won't say a word. Really, I promise. It's, it's, come on, it's, it's gorgeous outside. I don't, I don't think I can keep my eyes open. No, I think you're, you're just a little bit depressed, it's, that's all. I really, I have to go back to bed. Stuart, come on, all right? Don't do this. Don't do it. All right? Get angry or scream or cry or kick something, but don't let Adam do this to you. Don't let him win, Adam, please. Adam was right. I am simple-minded. Stuart, come on. You're one of the wisest people I've ever met in my life. No. No, Adam was right about everything. I'm so dumb, I can't even tell what's real. Close you were, your mother. Is there anything I can do? Yes, Adam, there is. You can tell me the truth. You've known me a long time. Adam, am I a cold, callous person? Of course not. No. Don't tell me what you think I want to hear. I want you to tell me the truth. Look, you, you, you've lived with me, you've worked with me, you've fought with me. Do you think of me as an iceberg? No, not at all. Erica, where is this coming from? My mother is dead. I haven't shed a tear. What's wrong with me? Why can't I cry? There's no gentle way of saying this. Your grandmother died. Like my grand... Which one? Mrs. Tyler. Mona. No. I'm sorry. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. It's a mistake. She's not sick. Nobody, nobody said that she was sick. She's not... Are you sure? Yeah. When? Night before last, in her sleep, apparently. She didn't suffer. You know, it's the sort of death people pray for. It's, uh, it's the kindest way to die. It's okay, it's okay. I'm here. It's all right. Erica, you were anything but cold and unfeeling. You're in shock, that's all. Maybe. But I... I don't really think so. I mean, my mother is gone. I know that. It's real. I accept it. In your head, yes. But you don't feel it yet. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, yes, I feel it. It's in there. It's just that it won't come out, or it can't come out, or I won't let it come out. I, I can't tell. Well, people grieve in many different ways. So this is it? I mean, aren't there supposed to be tears? There are no rules. Oh, sure there are. Adam, life is full of rules. You know that, like... Nobody ever loves you like your mother. That's true. I know that. I've heard it said a million times. I've probably said it myself a million times. And I thought I always knew what it meant until now. 
You were the light of Mona's life, Erica. Last night I lay awake in bed for a long time. I was thinking about things I thought that I had forgotten. I was thinking about a tea party with a little rag doll named Pookie. And a snow globe with a castle inside. And a canopy bed with dotted Swiss ruffles. And I remember that my mother always said this one nursery rhyme to me. There was a little girl who had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead. And when she was good, she was very, very good. And when she was bad, she was horrid. She'd always say that to me, and then she'd look right at me, and she'd laugh, and she'd have this big gleam in her eye, and she'd wink her special wink at me. She never said that I was that little girl with the curl, but I knew what she meant. She understood me, everything about me, the great and the not so great. And she was the only one I could never trick, never had to. Do you even have the vaguest idea of what I'm talking about? Yes, uh... Someone who sees right through you and loves you right down to your soul. Faults and all. I had that. Now it's gone. Some people go through their whole lives and never experience that kind of love. But I had it and now it's lost forever and I can't even cry. Give yourself time. Time? Oh, time. I don't understand. It went so fast. It's too fast, and it's not fair. Why wasn't I here with her? Why did she have to die alone? No, no, she... You were... She was here, in your house, surrounded by your things. Oh, things. Those things are you. Those things... It's as if she went to sleep in your arms. I'm absolutely certain of it. I called her just before she went to bed. Good. But that's... that's important. Be glad. She sounded so happy. She was laughing. She was making plans. We were going to go buy Bianca all these clothes. Oh, and an anniversary gift for you. Oh, uh, no need. I'm sorry that I missed that ceremony when you renewed your vows. How was it? Was it lovely? I'm sure it was. Well, um, just say it was a night I'll never forget. Adam, I hope you never take your family for granted. I mean, they love you. They love you just the way you are. They love you in spite of it. Don't ever take that for granted, please, Adam. I mean, life can just change in a blink. The last thing I said to my mother was, I love you, Mom. I'm very glad I did that. Eric, excuse me. Um, there's something I've got to do. Yes, of course. Go. You're sure you'll be all right here alone? My daughter's coming any minute. Okay, good. If there's anything I can do, just... just. You already did, really. The things you said to me, they really made me feel better, Adam. Thank okay. you. Now go. Do what you have to do. Thank you. Uncle Stewart, you have a firmer grip on reality than anybody I know. Really, it's Adam who has a distorted view of life. No, Stewart, Adam lies about everything that he wants. And what Adam wants right now is to get these charges against him dropped. So he's lying about us. And you're not stupid. Oh, yes, I am. I'm the, I'm the dumbest man alive. I thought my brother loved me. And he, and he doesn't, or he couldn't have said the things that he said. Nobody believes what Adam's saying. Not the DA. I, yeah, and even if Tanner does buy his I don't act. care about Tanner. I care about my brother, Adam. Because I'm a fool. No, Stuart. I know no. Adam has some faults, but I knew for sure that he'd never turn on me. <laughs> if that's not stupid, I don't know what is. I trusted Adam, too. Does that make me stupid? I feel like somebody died. Like, like I had a brother and he died. I know, Uncle Stuart. I don't have a dad anymore. 
But we're better off without him. Now, who needs Adam, huh? Right. Forget him. Right. Who needs... Who needs Adam anyhow? Who needs a brother that thinks he's stupid? Where are you going? Um, I, I, I gotta get out of here. You know what? That's a good idea. Why don't you change your clothes and we'll take that walk, okay? No, no. I mean, I mean for good. I don't live in this town anymore. I'm leaving Pine Valley. What do you want? Is Stuart here? Come to admire your damage? I'd like to see him. The feeling's not mutual. Go away. Where is he? In the ozone. Haven't you heard? Stuart's a head case. I need to see my brother. Oh, to fit him for a straight jacket? Yeah, where are the men in the white coats, Adam? Out back in a hospital van? I'm alone. You got that right. You sure don't have a family anymore. You have to find a fresh crop of victims. Either that or learn to enjoy solitude. Haley, please. No. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. No more, no more. Even Uncle Stewart is sick of your lies. Maybe Stewart should speak for himself. Your brother's not competent to speak for himself, remember? That's right. He's a basket case. Delusional, isn't that what you said? There's something I have to tell him. Which I'm sure he doesn't need to hear. You're, it's not your call, is it, lady? Adam, you won, hands down. Really, congratulations. You know, you, you broke your brother's heart. So are you happy? Are you pleased about it? You're not going near him, all right? You're not going to destroy what is left of that man. I have something important to say to my brother, and I'm damned if you or anyone else is going to stop me. What is it, Adam? What do you want to say? Something bad happened. I could tell. Um, I need to call the office. Can I use your phone? Yes, yes, please. Something wrong? Daddy wouldn't tell me. You're not happy. I'm getting scared. Oh, I'm sorry. I never meant to frighten you. It's just that I... I wanted to tell you this because... Are you sick? Please, Mom, you're not sick, are no, you? No, sweetheart. I'm not sick. I'm fine. 
But honey, Grandma passed away. Yes. Mm, she, she's with the angels. Dad? Grandma's dead? She, she just went to sleep and, and God decided that he would take her to heaven. So that's where she is. But honey, she was not in pain at all and she wasn't afraid. She just slipped away softly and, and quietly in, in her sleep. I want to see her again. Oh, honey, yes, you will. Oh, yes, you will. Because every time you you see a forget-me-not on, on the china plate, you're going to see your grandma walking into a room with a plate full of oatmeal cookies and cups of tea. And every time you see a peony or a snapdragon or a sunflower, you're going to see your grandma digging in the flower beds. And every time when you grow up and you have your own baby, you rock that baby to sleep. You're going to rock your baby to sleep with Grandma's love pies. You didn't even get to say goodbye. You know what I really think? I think that when there's a love so strong like, like yours and Grandma's, I think there really isn't goodbye. I think it's just I'll see you later. Because someday, oh, a very long time from now, I mean, when you're a very old woman, a hundred years from now, you'll be 110. And you'll have your own grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And I think when it's your time to go to heaven, there you'll be in this beautiful place that you have never seen before. And your grandma will be there waiting for you. She's going to hold out her hand to you. That's how you know you're in the right place. Your grandma will be there for you. Till that day, you keep grandma in your heart. And that's the way she'll never be very far. The next time you sit in the garden, you talk to Grandma in your head. And she knows how much you love her and how much you miss her. And if you talk to her, she will hear you. I just wish I can see her face one more time. Just to say goodbye. You know something, honey? Mommy feels exactly the same way. And that's why we're going to the funeral home tonight, Bianca, so all the people who feel the way we do can come together and comfort each other. And say goodbye. You know, home? Is that where she is? Mm -hmm. Will we see her in her coffin? No, no, honey. I am sure that your grandma wanted us all to remember her exactly the way she was when she was full of life and, and smiling and laughing, just like when you would watch the sunset in the garden, honey. Or like when grandma would look at you and, and tell all his jokes. You know, I'm going to get to do one. Bianca, why don't you take your daddy in the kitchen and make a great big picture of iced tea? Nick. Hello, princess. Mark. Oh, Mark. How are you? Oh, how am I? I wasn't ready for this. No. Nobody's ever really ready. She went so fast. I know. There were so many things I... I never get to say to her. There's nothing you could have said to Mona that she didn't already know. Your mother knew you like the back of her hand. She did, didn't she? And still does. You can still feel it, can't you? Love that strong doesn't die. I told a vicious lie, Stuart, because I'm a coward. 
You're not simple-minded. You're not stupid. You certainly know what's real as opposed to what's fake. You know I'm telling you the truth right now. You're probably the only person in this room who does. And you're not dumb, Stuart. I am. I thought dodging prison was more important than my own brother. I thought I could hold my family together by betraying everyone in it. That's stupid. That's really stupid. Playing fast and loose with the people I love most. I went to Tanner, changed my plea to guilty. I'll be sentenced to 30 days in a minimum of security prison. I have to repay the county for the money they poured into my investigation, and after I get out, 500 hours of community service. I still don't like the idea of going to prison, but it's more than I deserve. I deserve to lose my brother. But I don't think I could survive that, Stuart. You're the other half of me. You're the good part. The best part. We were born together for a reason. Because without you, I'm not worth anything. And I swear on my soul that I will never hurt you again. Please, please forgive me. to be with you as a brother. <laughs> Doc, um, I'll be right back. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get something. I'll be right back. Oh, you can forget that. I'm not your twin. I'm not even related to you anymore. Haley, I'm not defending myself. I'm willing to take my punishment. Would you please... Do what? Sign up for, for the visitor's list over at the prison? No, I don't think so. No, thank you, really. And you can forget about seeing me on, around the old homestead, too. You can take my phone number out of your little phone book. I'm through with you, Adam. Like I should have been a long time ago. I swear that I'm not the man that I was. You are see. not a man, period. You're nothing but a water sleaze. Any distant memory. Please. Charlie, get me out of here before I lose my lunch. Enjoy club bed. You helped turn me around what you said yesterday. I meant everything I said to Stuart. Maybe I'm not so hopeless after all. Time will tell. Miss Kane, we have been overwhelmed with flowers. Your mother had a great many friends. Yes, she did. If there's anything I can do to uh, make this easier, Please don't hesitate to let me know. Thank you. Where's Grandma? 
Uh, Bianca, I think your mother would like a few minutes alone. Okay? Sweetheart, you just stay here with your daddy, okay? Just, just for a minute. I'll be right back. was all tired out. She needed to rest. Now she gets to do that, honey. She gets to rest. But her spirit is free and happy. She's with the angels, honey. And she's, she's with Grandpa Tyler and her mom and dad and lots of her wonderful Like it? It's wonderful. Very happy. And it's that's why I wanted you to have it. In prison is not a very happy place. I thought maybe you could put this on the wall. What a kind, generous thought. Thank you, Stuart. I'll treasure it. Not just for 30 days either. Always. Prisons can be dangerous. No, don't worry about me. I'll be fine. There's the minimum security. Counterfeiters, embezzlers, tax cheats. Probably run into a lot of my old friends. I'll write you. Would you? That'd mean a lot to me. There's one other favor I'd like to ask if uh, you can see your way clear to do it. Why? You know where Gloria is? No. I don't. Really, I don't. Could you find her and just tell her how sorry I am? No, I can't, Adam. I... I can't. You gotta apologize to your own wife. I'm gonna go join Scott and finish our rafting trip. I don't blame you one bit. But I don't know, don't pick up any bad habits from those other guys up in, in prison. You already have enough of your own.
that you're here, Jack. I loved your mother almost as much as your mother was a great lady. If there's anything I can do. Thank you. How's Erica doing? Seems to be doing remarkably well. I am so, so sorry. Goodness. Look, how about if I just pack up my, my jammies and curlers and bunk over at your place for a couple oh, of nights, huh? Oh, you don't have to do that. Well, I want to, you know. I mean, Palmer's away in Baltimore anyway. I don't want you to be alone. No, I'm, I'm not alone. Uh, Bianca is with me and Mark and Nick. So I'm fine, really. I'm not alone. Well, all right, whatever you think is best, but I hope you call me if you change your mind. I'm fine, thank you. I am going to call you, though, anyway, of course. Okay, all right, good. I'll go over. What can I do? Anything at all, tell me. Nothing, Olga, really, I'm, I'm okay. What will we do without her? I don't know. of her. You used my mother to get closer in the firing range of me. So don't come here now with your crocodile tears and claim to have had a relationship with my mother. It won't fly. The tears are real. The loss that I feel is real. Go feel it at Wild Wind. Your presence here is an insult to my mother's memory. I should have known you'd treat this like a press conference. Erica Kane, the grief-stricken star. Look at you. The hair, the dress, the makeup, it's all perfect. Waiting for that one close-up when that one reporter asks you, your mother is dead, how do you feel? One lone tear will drop down your overblushed cheek. I can see the headlines now. Erica Kane cries, the known universe mourns. And you're inhuman! Look at you! Have you shed one tear? Have you cried at all? Or are you waiting for the camera crews to arrive? Mommy, why is Kendra here? I, I came to... Pay my respects to Kendall was just going. How, how are you doing, Bianca? Are you okay? You care about me. Yes, yes, I do. I want her to leave. You heard me. Go. Stay away from my little girl. Kendall, just let me escort you to the door. Okay? I came here to pay my respects to my grandma, and that is what I intend to do. Kendall, the door is this way. Let go of me! I didn't mean to do it, Erica, I swear. The only thing I wanted to do was just say goodbye. I just want to pay my respects. That's all I ever wanted to do. Kendall, Kendall, let, let, let's go outside. We'll get some fresh air. Come on, you, you, you'll just feel better. Come on. Are you okay? 
Yes, I am. I'm, I'm fine now. Haley, my mother would be so pleased that you're here. I am so sorry about my mother. I Me mean, too. She was a great lady. Yes, she was. Listen, if there's anything we can do. Thank you, Haley. Thank you very much. But really, I have done everything. Everything's fine. Well, Mona, do you realize we spend a quarter of a century fighting? Such a terrible waste. But in the end, we were well on our way to becoming friends. I suppose we have the Willow Lake debacle to thank for that. Well, now you're back with Charles again. It's probably the way it should be. Tell him I said hello. And take care of the old fool. And take care of yourself, Mona. Know that I'll miss you, really. Bon voyage, adieu. Eric is on. I talked to your mother a few days ago. Did you know that we were planning to go to Alaska in the fall? Alaska? <laughs> she said it was wild and untamed like us. I ordered parkas and she wanted hers red. And... No, I... I do have your phone number, but I won't bother you because I'm fine. I really am in fine. Erica, I am so, so sorry. Oh, Olivia, thank you. If there is anything that I can do for you. As a matter of fact, would you sing tomorrow at my mother's funeral? My mother. My mother called me when I was in Seattle and told me how much she enjoyed your singing at Captain Dixie's wedding. I'll be honored. Oh, that's wonderful. My mother will be thrilled. <laughs> Erica, I was really sorry to hear about Mona. Thank you, dear. I thought, you know, the worst was over when, when she beat her cancer the last time. So did I. Who could ever have imagined that this would happen? I certainly couldn't. You know, if there's anything that you need or very sweet of you to offer to help me when you've lost so much. Of course, I... I heard about the baby. I didn't think it was particularly appropriate for me to call you, but I want you to know I did think about you. I understand. Anyway, I hope that uh, there's certainly happier times coming for... for us in the future. Yes, well, you certainly deserve it. Well, I meant for both of us. You don't know me, Mrs. Tyler. But I promised your granddaughter, Kendall, that I'd say goodbye for her. So, goodbye. I know she loves you in her own way. I hope that you can understand and accept that. I think it would mean a lot to her. I can't 
can't believe she's gone. I can't either. Erica's holding up well. She's not crying anymore. Now, I got news for you, honey. She hadn't cried at all. Not one single tear has coursed down her cheek since Mama died. And if you ask me, it doesn't bode well. Oh, nonsense. Erica's a rock. She'll take this in stride just like everything else, with her chin held high and her shoulders back. People are starting to leave. Well, I guess it is getting late. Why don't we say goodbye to Erica? Okay. Right. Sure. What do you say we get a move on, huh? We got a reservation waiting. You know, as much as I like the pub and grub, I, I don't know, ribs are so messy. We've got a good clothes on. Tell you what, why don't we just go home and I'll make a family dinner, Amanda can join us. And that sounds like fun, I'll give Wilma the night off. Oh, really? Dana, I like the way you think. We got ourselves a homebody here. Pretty lucky, huh? Lucky doesn't even come close. Really?
Well, you handled that perfectly. Just like you did everything else today. Mona would be proud. Well, can't disappoint my mother. Mm -mm. Oh, where are my manners? Would you like some coffee? I know I would. I'm not the least bit sleepy. Are you? No. Coffee'd be fine. Good, good. Then we can catch up. Then we can just talk all night. That's what you want. That's what I want. You know what I really want? I want you to tell me a story about my mother. Something fun, something she would like. All right, well, let's see. <clears throat> there was a time when we were on our way home after visiting Bob and Agnes in St. Croix. And <laughs> you almost got arrested. I mean, you got to. I know that story my mother has told me that a million times, and I love that story. I'd love to hear it again. Well, it all started with a coconut, your mother. You, uh, you have worked your heart out over all of this. Why don't you let me do something? Thank you, Nick. Thank you. That's very, very sweet of you. But really, I have everything under control. Well, at least let me tell the limousine driver where to park. <laughs> Unless you've done that already. No, I haven't. Aha! Uh -huh. Let me show you. Good. Be right back. I saw Mona was at the hospital. A patient that I had grown quite fond of had just passed away and uh, I wasn't in a very good mood. Mona was on her way home and uh, I'm afraid I was kind of short with her. She had worked a very hard long day and she had every right to go home. She didn't need me being rude to her. But that wasn't Mona. No, Mona stopped me and she sat me down. She made me tell her what was wrong. We must have sat there for over two hours. And she just listened while I went on and on and on. Such patience. You know. That's the kind of true good friend that Mona was. Mark, it's, it's lovely. Mrs. Chance took Special pleasure altering this one. Well, it's it's just perfect. Well, it just needs a little press, and then we're all set. Oh, fine. I'll, I'll just go heat up the iron. Oh, and... no, you won't. I'll do that. Listen, the way your hands are fluttering, I wouldn't trust you with an iron. You're liable to burn a hole in it. Oh, what a horrible thought. <laughs> go and get yourself gutted up for your bride's dinner. <laughs> oh, Merton. I'm so, I'm so happy, but I'm, I'm so nervous. Well, you wouldn't be a bride if you weren't, honey. <laughs> Whenever there was a, a benefit at the hospital, Mona was always the first to volunteer. You never even had to ask her. She would just uh, type up her list of volunteers, and at the very end of the page, she would quietly add her name. She never seemed to want to take credit for anything. She seemed happier just being in the background, you know. She was a, she was a true 
unsung heroine. When I think of Mona, I think of her as a single working parent at a time when women such as herself were looked down upon or completely ignored. I mean, I, so, I don't really understand how she did it, how she managed. Managed. I mean, she triumphed. She held down a steady job. She raised Erica. She was a wonderful role model for Erica and for Bianca. And I'm, uh, I'm going to miss her more than I can say. I first met Mona more than 24 years ago. She was working for another good friend of mine, Dr. Charles Tyler. She was his secretary then. And they fell in love. I know firsthand how hard it sometimes can be to have a working relationship with your spouse. Uh, Charles and Mona were an inspiration. They had a wonderful marriage. And Charles just loved to boast about how lucky man he was to have found Mona. Who could argue? What is that woman doing here? Mona joined me for a few days of relaxation and sightseeing. Relaxation, you call it? Well, I call it out and out adultery. Phoebe, look at her. Dressed like some local street trumpet. That is enough. Oh, enough, is it? Transporting your little doxy halfway around the world, parading your illicit relationship. I said that is enough. Don't you dare raise your voice to me, Charles Tyler. And don't you dare forget that you're a lady. Oh, I am so relieved to know, Charles, that you can still tell the difference between me and your backstreet front. Look, I... Charles, I... please, please. It's all right, really. Oh, yes, it's all right, really. You know who you are, don't you, you Jezebel? I want you to meet my very good friend, Professor Langley Wallingford. How do you do, Professor? How do you do, sir? It's nice to meet you. A pleasure, ma'am. I understand that you are doing research on the Pine Valley First Families. Yes, I'm just a dull, stuffy historian whose only passion is research. <laughs> You've been uh, researching Mrs. Tyler, haven't you? Yes, I... Because I... my family, the Englishes, were the first inhabitants of Pine Valley... As anyone who's anyone knows. Oh, we do indeed. In fact, they were in the valley before even the pines. <laughs> <laughs> Embarrassing, Langley and me, by trying to force our family to choose between whether they're going to attend your wedding or our wedding. Oh, Phoebe, that is absurd. We didn't have any idea that you and the professor had set a date. Just an unfortunate coincidence. <laughs> And then to add insult to injury, imagine having to hear it from that tawdry little wife of Chuck's. Oh, you two, you would do anything, anything to spoil my first chance for happiness in years. Mrs. Tyler, Charles is telling you the truth. Well, you expect me to believe you? You probably came up with this scheme in the first place. All right, TV, that's enough. I won't have you talking to Mona that way. Mona, I can't tell you what a shock this is. It's so sudden. Charles never had any heart trouble that I know of. Well, at least he died without suffering, and we can certainly be thankful for that. Well, he worked too hard. When he retired, he, he should have just spent more time in leisure instead of throwing himself back into that emotional maelstrom. Charles died doing the work he loved the most, Phoebe. And I'm very grateful for that. If he could have chosen, this is what he would have wanted. Were you able to see him before? Yes. Joe called me immediately and I got there and I, I was able to take his hand and tell him how very much I loved him. Oh, Mother, don't do this. Don't don't talk about this. I'm all right, right I'm all right. I, I understand your grief, Mona. I certainly do. 
course, I had Charles during his prime years when he was at his best and when he was so very happy. Well, of course, he was even happier in his later years, Mrs. Wallingford, when he married my mother. Just over a year ago, Mona faced her greatest challenge. It was cancer. But she fought it with her trademark combination of courage and strength and dignity. And she won her battle. And the fruits of her victory were the added months she had to live. And she used that time visiting her family, helping others, even taking some time off to enjoy herself. I wish Mona was still with us, but I think the best way we can honor her memory is by making an effort to live our lives the way she lived hers, with kindness and sincerity. Phoebe Wallingford, what do you think you're doing? I have a few things to say about Mona Kane. Most of you here today know a lot about my history with Mona Kane, Tyler. Much of it wasn't pretty, granted. But there was far more to it than just grist for the gossip mill. Mona Kane married my husband. We were adversaries, but underneath we were both women. And though it took a while in time, I learned to have respect for Mona. My only regret is that it took this for me to admit it publicly. I can remember Mona's been around. When I was a kid, she and grandfather loved the games at my birthday party. When I applied to college, she <laughs> typed my applications. And when Haley and I opened our PI firm, she was one of our first clients. Through it all, she was always there. Erica, I've seen you hurt so many times. Now, I know you're not going to like what I have to say, but I'll say whatever is necessary to keep you from making your life more miserable than it already is. Mother, my life is not miserable. In the last few months, I've seen you lose Bianca and Travis and Jackson, and plus that, I've seen Adam Chandler trying to run your, your social life and your, and, your, and your business life. Well, okay, okay, so I've had a few problems. You. You've had monumental losses. And I'm sure that you're turning to Charlie as a reaction to all of this. Oh, now, Mother, that is ridiculous. I, I know you hate to be alone. He, he's been good company, and I'm sure he's been very charming company. But you don't love him. Yes, I do. Some people just don't enjoy their own company. You're one of them. Oh, now, see, that's where you don't know me as well as you think you do. I love my own company. I prefer my own company to anyone else's, especially right now, Mother. I do not need a man to be happy. You certainly married enough of them. Do not cloud the issue with ancient history. I am an adult now, Mother. Yes, I have made some mistakes, but I have learned from them. I survived, and I'm proud of that. Don't you see that? I'm proud of all of that. Me, just me, Erica Kane, it's enough. It's more than enough. Because my opinion of myself is what counts most. Some women were created not to be alone, and you're one of those. Well, we're all alone, Mother. Happiness right here inside, honey, that's what counts. Oh, Mother, you only say that because you never had any dreams. 
You never had any goals beyond trying to break a hundred words in shorthand. I mean, we're different. Erica, I've been alone a few years now. I get up every morning and I go to a job that I really and truly do love. And at night I go to bed alone with only Charles's pillow and some memories to keep me company. Oh, Mother. You know, girls and dreams don't snuggle up with you in the, in the moonlight. You miss it. Oh. Sweetheart, I just really want you to be happy. Well, I am happy. I never imagined such a wonderful ending to this story. Mother, for heaven's sakes, don't call today an ending. You know, we have quite a legacy here. Three generations of strong women. <laughs> and you're right. It's not a, an ending. We've only just begun. Oh, the whole future looks so promising. Don't do this, Mother. Please don't start. I mean, if you make us cry, we're just going to have to do our makeup all over again. I just want your daughters to realize how lucky they are. Thank you, Mom. Look at us. Look at us. <laughs> Three generations of cane women. Isn't that remarkable? <laughs> yes, isn't it? Mona was the type of person who really gave of herself. Not just to me and her family, but to everybody. I mean, if she was here today, she'd be holding everybody's hand, bucking us up, telling us it was all going to get better. She was that kind of person. And I'll never forget her. That's really sweet, thank you. But I think it's best that I stick around in case I'm needed. Okay. But if it gets too hot, you know my door's always open. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Here. Kendall! What the hell are you doing here? You know how Erica will react with you showing up here. You're showing up is, is like spitting in her face. Well, she takes it that way. That's her problem, not mine. Let her deal with it. I'm here for myself, and I am here for Mona. And even though no one likes to acknowledge it, I am a part of this family. Then prove it. Show some respect for the dead and leave before Erica arrives. I have every right to be here. I'm warning you, Kendall. I, I, will, I will drag you out of here if I have to. Why are you doing this? Look who you are trying to protect. A woman who stabbed you, who divorced you, who couldn't care less about you, and she has proved it over and over again. So how can you still care so much about Erica? Mona and I were planning to retire together. Uh, someday. But we had already bought adjoining condos in a place that we thought was just going to be a, a beautiful retirement community. It was called Willow Lake Acres. Well, I guess by this time most of you know that that beautiful place was a, a great big scam. I, I, I was just heartbroken. I mean, it's, it's, it's real hard on your self-esteem to be suckered like an old fool. And I, I even closed the shop for a few days. But Mona would have none of that. She got my spirit right back up again. She wouldn't let me be sorry for myself. Thank you, Mona. God. God be with you. I uh, think 
One thing we really have to remember about her is her strength. A sweeter woman you would never find, but if, if you crossed her or anybody she cared about, watch out. The woman had spirit. And she needed every bit of it to, to deal with a daughter as unique as Erica. Will you stop looking at me like that and get dressed? I'm not getting dressed, Erica. Mother! There's not going to be a wedding as long as you still love Nick? I don't love Nick! I don't believe you. Well, then don't! But I'm getting married to Tom today and there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, yes, there is. I can stop the ceremony halfway through. I will not let you marry that lovely young Tom Cuddy if you don't love him. I simply will not. Erica! What on earth do you mean coming in Mother, here? Mother, if my marriage falls apart, it will be all your fault. What is wrong? How can you even ask that? How could you, Mother? How could you go behind my back? I'm your daughter. How could you talk you, about you, me you, like you, that? You please keep your voice down. Dr. Tyler's in there. Did you or did you not speak to Tom about me this morning? Yes, I did. But I didn't bring it up. He was the one that wanted to discuss it with me. He's very upset with you. Well, of course he's upset. You stirred him on. You agreed with him. No, I did not. I just listened. I think Tom is a wonderful husband and I would do anything in the world to see that your marriage works. Well, then I'll tell you what you can do. You can leave us alone, Mother. You can let us work out our own problem. How dare you, Mother? Erica! When are you going to learn to keep your nose out of my private life? What happened? What do you think happened? After you and Mark told Tom about the birth control pills. That's not true, Tom. Mar Mark and I spent the entire morning looking for you, trying to warn you. Okay, maybe you didn't come out and say it, but you might as well have. Erica, would you please calm down and just tell me what happened? Tom threw me out. That's what happened. He never wants to see me again. Oh, no. Oh, yes. And it is all your fault. Yours and my brother Mark's, you two big mouths. You ruined my life. Erica, that's not true. We said nothing. Tom practically knew when he walked into this office. Why didn't you lie to him? Why didn't you tell him it wasn't true? Because we had no idea what, what Dr. Clater had said. Well, you didn't even try to help me. And now I don't have a husband, and I don't even have a home to go to. So you're trying to say you don't approve? I'm not trying to say I don't approve. I am saying that I don't approve. Why can't you wait, Erica, once, once? Why can't you be married with a little dignity? Oh, you. You are just trying to cause trouble as always. I'm trying to keep you from making a fool of yourself. Where on earth did you get this idea? Mike thought of this idea. I don't, himself. I don't, I don't believe that. I just don't believe it. He would, he would never think of anything so, so stupid. I have heard enough. You are provincial and old-fashioned, and I'm sorry I ever told you about it. But, sweetheart, it just isn't proper. You don't care about proper, proper. All you care about is criticizing me. Pick, 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 carp, carp, carp. What did I do to deserve this? You are a terminal wet blanket. Well, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to talk to Mike. You don't you dare. What's wrong with you anyway? How could you be so hypocritical? The last time I wanted to marry Mike, you were all gung-ho. But, sweetheart, honey, the, the circumstances were very, very different then. Unless you've had a total memory lapse. You've only been a, a widow for a very short time. Don't you think you should wait before taking another husband? Oh, well, how did everything go? Is Jeremy upstairs? No, he is not upstairs. I threw him out. Oh, no. Mother, what could you have been thinking of? How could you do this to me? Erica, I just wanted to get the two of you back together. I know how unhappy you've been, and I think you're still in love with Jeremy. How dare you interpret my feelings? I have been unhappy because I wasted so much of my life on that man. That's why, and now I cannot stand the sight of him. I think you're just having a very bad reaction to all the troubles you've had. Now, now just calm down. Take a few very deep breaths. <gasps> Living with you is impossible. Erica, 
there is absolutely no reason to push me out of the door. Mother, I told you I really need to be alone. Well, I understand that. All I wanted to do was to see you rest, and, and I'd go in the kitchen and make you something nice to eat when you got up. That's great, Mother, but I'm not hungry, and I know Travis won't be hungry. And besides, Carl is here, and if I need anything, I'll ask her. All right, all right. Now, you just promise me that you will get some rest. Yes, I promise. Erica, okay. honey. Oh, what? Sweetheart, I love you. And I know it's very hard for you to believe this right now, but this is not the end of the world. You and Travis still have a wonderful life to look forward to. Um, I'm going to call you. Bye-bye. Bye. Erica and Bianca know exactly what I'm talking about. Because they inherited a lot from Mona. Spunk, determination, strength. And that is just a small part of Mona's incredible legacy. My grandma was a great grandmother. We always had a lot of fun together, even at the grocery store. She taught me how to braid my hair and bake ginger snap cookies. She made the best cookies in the whole world. She even gave me her secret recipe. She said I was the only one she told. Nobody else? I just can't understand how, how this could happen. Oh, Mother, I ask you for a little understanding and that's what I get. But I just don't, I don't understand how you could, could not be careful. I was. Whoever said accidents happen at home was right. Oh, Erica. Look, sweetheart, I hate to hurry you, but you know... Uh, <laughs> The wedding's soon, and Dr. Crater hasn't brought your release up yet. Oh, Mother, please, don't worry. My goodness, we have plenty of time. No, no, no. The, the wedding's in less than an hour. Well, I mean, if you're that nervous, why don't you go find Dr. Crater and bring me the release? My good, you're starting to make me nervous now. Oh, I can't wait for your daughter to start ordering you around. I should go up those steps right now and get her back right this minute. Please, please, please don't make a scene. Well, why not? I have every legal right. Don't you think Bianca has had enough for one day? But what if she can't sleep in a strange bed? What if she wakes up? You know who she is. She will love me. Sweetheart, believe me, she'll manage. You know, Mother, she is the most important thing in the world to me. Can't you understand how I feel? Yes. No, you can't. Of course you can't. Nobody ever tried to take me away from you. Nobody wanted me. I wanted you. And as much as you love Bianca, that's how much I love you. Would it make you happy to marry Travis? Well, I mean, if Bianca's happy, I'm happy. Erica, making a, a bad marriage is not going to make anyone happy in the long run. I mean, if, if you marry Travis and you love Jack, it's not going to be good for Bianca. Honey, trust your own judgment. Make your own decisions. Don't let, don't let Bianca make your decisions. Don't let your father, Travis, Jack, not even me. Trust yourself. Do what's best for you. And you'll find the right answer, believe me. These are, uh, these are not my words. I could only echo what has already been said much better by others. These are, uh, these are Erica's words. Erica wrote this for her mother. My mother's life cannot be summed up in a short speech. Nobody's life can. I could give you the highlights, but that would leave too many things unsaid. My mother never made the cover of a magazine. She's never started a major company. Her accomplishments seemed to be on a smaller scale. 
but her contributions to her family, to her friends, and to this community were actually beyond measure. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say the entire town will miss her. You have no idea how many phone calls and letters I've gotten from her mail carrier across and got her at her corner. People who couldn't be here today, people who have never even met Mona Tyler, will feel some sense of loss in their lives because she was a true pillar of strength and of goodness. I didn't always appreciate what a remarkable woman my mother was. She was brilliant. Bianca was born and I had to be a mother. I saw everything my mother had to do for me growing up and finally I realized what a phenomenal mother I had. She was always there. We always had each other. When things started working against us, the Cain women stuck together and fought back. And we got each other through some of the hardest times of our lives. Where have you been? Well, I took a bus and I went down to the beach. I just walked by the ocean. Oh, I see. You wanted to walk and think about everything. No, I wanted to kill myself. Oh, Eric. Well, I just thought I would take a stand. Eric, how you? could you have thought of such a thing? Well, don't worry, Mother. I couldn't do it. I didn't even have the guts to kill myself. You see, I'm a big failure. A failure at everything. I couldn't even do that. I think it takes much more courage to... Live and face disappointments. What else did Sheila tell you? Oh, she just sketched out what it's been like for you out here. Well, it is a very cold town. Daddy's friends wouldn't help me. She said that both of you just got little jobs here and there to pay the rent. Well, yeah, I did everything but drive a taxi why on earth didn't you get in touch with me i would have sent you money you must never do anything like this again erica your mother and i will always stand behind you dr tyler died doing the thing he loved most helping people in the hospital where he devoted so much of his life and you know how much the clinic meant to him you know how happy it made him to be associated with the clinic it's just that he he worked too hard he overextended himself but that's the way Dr. Tyler was. He just loved giving to people and helping others. And his memorial is going to be just packed with people whose, whose lives he touched. Charles was the finest man I ever knew. I was blessed to have him. And he was blessed to have you. He loved you very much. You made him very happy. Sweetheart, I love Charles with all my heart. If anything should happen, I mean, well, something bad, you promise me you'll take care of Erica. Oh, no, nothing's going to happen. Nikki, I want you to promise me, promise oh, me that you'll take care of Erica. All right, all right, just be calm, I promise. Of course I promise. Thank you, honey. Well, I have a few things, um, special things, they're sentimental, not, not very valuable, but... I made a list, and some go to you and some to Bianca. Listen, I'm not going to talk about this, okay? I'm not going to let you talk about this. I, this is, you're having some tests tomorrow, that's all. This is not the end of the world. Erica, it's all right to be afraid. Well, there's nothing to be afraid of. Honey, putting on the best front in the world isn't going to change what's going on inside my body. Now, I'm scared. I'm so scared of getting sick. I'm scared of being dependent on you. But I'm most scared of leaving you alone. Don't you talk like that. Do you hear me? Don't you ever talk like that. You are never going to leave me alone. Do you hear me? You're not going anywhere and you're never going to leave me alone. I was lucky. We all were to have her in our lives. I ask you all for one thing. Please remember Mona Tyler with grace and with dignity. Do my mother's memory proud. 
She was too special to be forgotten. And I loved her with every fiber of my being. to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God our sister Mona, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious unto her. my very soul that if anyone could lick this thing you could with your help well you're gonna go on licking this thing you know that for a long time I thank God you're fine I love you I love you baby rest 
rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. May her soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. No! 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 You can't see her in the ground! No! Mom! Don't leave me! Oh, darling! She was there, too? No, last night. You're bound to hear about this one, too. Erica ordered me to leave the funeral home. You went? After I gave you that big speech not to, you went? Kendall! Why does no one understand? Mona was my grandmother. I had every right to grieve for her. But Erica wouldn't let me, and neither would any of you. So I went to the cemetery instead, not to crash the funeral and not to torment Erica, just to be there. You make it sound so noble. My grandmother deserves my respect. She treated me with dignity. Am I so terrible for wanting to grieve for one of the only people who ever loved me? No. No. But given your, shall we say, turbulent history with the Kane family, there are other less controversial ways to show respect. Now, your grandmother's spirit is everywhere. You want to you wanna light a candle, go to a chapel? You want to climb a mountain, see her face in the sky? You want to get on your knees and thank God that she touched your life? You can do that. You don't have to mourn in public to make it count. Guess I messed up again, huh? At least I'm consistent. I'll give you that. Can I ask you something? Sure. Do you know that Dimitri is still in love with Erica? He told you that? He didn't have to. It was written all over his face. You should have seen him today. He was so protective of Erica, so concerned, so caring. I mean, he was everything a man in love should be. But I just don't get it. I mean, how can he still love her after everything she's done to him? at rest now. Let her lie in peace. No! No, I will not let you put her in the ground. Please no. Come with me. Eric. No, let go of me, you ghoul! Oh, Mom, stop them, please. Now don't leave me. Don't let them take you from me, Mom. Please. I need you. Don't leave me. Eric. Please don't leave Eric. me. It's all right. No! Eric, it will be okay. Yeah, Erica, listen to your brother, please. No! Just, we know you're upset, Eric. Just no, you just get away from me. Oh, on, get away from me. Step out! You cannot do this. I will not let you put my mother in the ground. I will not let you put dirt on my mother. No. It's all right, mother. I'm going to protect you, Mom. It's okay. Eric, they won't take you from me. They won't. No. Let go of me. No, Erica, stop Let go of me. me. No, I need my mother. I have to help her. Jack, let me go to her. I have to help her. Please, hey, Jack! Jack, shut up. My mother is running out of air in there. Hey, she could hey, die in there. Hey. She could die. My mother is there. Oh. Bianca, don't you be afraid. It's okay. Why is Mommy acting like this? She's scaring me. Bianca. Do you remember the time you lost your favorite doll? Now you were so upset you couldn't stop crying. Well, that's how Mommy feels right now. She's so upset she doesn't know what she's doing. When will Mommy be Mommy again? I can't say for certain, but I know that your mother's strong. And she'll come back to you again, I promise. When I cry, Mommy always makes it better. I don't know what to do when Mommy cries. Oh, Bianca, darling, there's, this time there's nothing you can do. Your Mommy hurts so much over losing Grandma that, that there's nothing any of us can do to make it better. 
Not right now, anyway. But in, in time, with your help and everybody that loves her, your mommy will be all right. Uncle, Uncle Mark and Uncle Jack will make sure that she gets plenty of rest. That's what she needs right now. I always feel better after my nap. Yes. And your mother will feel better after she gets rest, too. I promise you. Erica, Erica, come on now, please. Please listen to me, okay? You gotta calm down a little bit. No, I want my mother, Jack. No, I need her. I know, I know, but she... It's okay, come on. We'll... We'll just go home now, okay? No, I don't want to go home. If I do, they'll put her in the ground. And Jack, my mother hates the cold. Please don't do that to her. her. The ground is so cold, Jack. Take her out of here. I can't let her do that. I can't let them take her and put her in the ground. Erica, come on. It's time to go home. No. Erica, you listen to me. I won't leave her. Erica, listen to me. I know how hard it is to let go. Uh, But Mona is free now. No more tears, no more pain. Let her go. Let her rest in peace. But I miss her so much. We all do. Believe me, Erica. But I know that her smile and her love will be with us always. I can't walk away from her. My mother never turned her back on me. We'll come back. We'll come back. We'll visit her, okay? No, Jack, please don't make me go home. Please don't make me go home. I don't know what I'll do without her. Oh, Mom. Oh, Mom. I love you so much. I love you, Mom. I love you. Tadikins back, the two of you are going to live happily ever after. I'm talking white picket fences, rose-covered cottages, the works. Well, I don't know, but I thank you, Opal. I hope so. Yeah. Well, uh, I guess we better get going, too, huh? You need a lift? No, actually, I thought I'd stop by Will's grave. Well, you mind some company? No, that'd be very nice. Let me, uh, I'm not leaving you. Mommy is right here. Promise. Cross my heart, I promise. Mommy made quite a scene in the cemetery, didn't she? I was scared. Oh, honey. You got to sit down here for me. 
I didn't mean to upset you. I'm sorry. It's just that... Well, I just was so upset I, myself. I, I was so scared, too. I, I didn't know what to do. Is that why you were hugging Grandma's coffin? Maybe. I just felt so lost without Grandma. I just, it hurt me so much to lose Grandma. But I'm better now, honey. Because I know now that Grandma is, is safe with God in heaven. And I think the worst is behind us. So we're going to be fine. You and I are safe together. And we're going to be fine. Are you sure? Absolutely. I'm glad. Dimitri said that everything would get better, but I wasn't sure. Dimitri? Honey, what did you see Dimitri? At the cemetery. He was crying too. I'm glad you're back, Mommy. I love you. I love you too, sweetheart. I love you. And you can count on that and me, honey, always. I was afraid you'd leave me. Never, honey. I want to be here. I'm going to be around and watch you grow up to a beautiful young lady. Like you? Well, I don't know about that, sweetheart. I gave your grandma an awful lot of trouble growing up. What kind of trouble? Let's just say that I was a uh, handful. For grandma okay let's just say that i put grandma into orbit more times than the space shuttle okay yeah it's pretty funny looking back on it now but grandma was very upset with me at all times oh how she'll laugh if you follow in my footsteps can i wear high heels would the daughter of erica k wear anything else <laughs> yes come in how's everything Mother and daughter are doing just as well as can be expected. Isn't that right, honey? Yes, Mommy. Yes. Well, that's good. I have to go back to the Valley Inn and make some phone calls to the West Coast. So, Bianca, why don't you come with me? I'll get a phone down by the pool and you can go swimming, okay? I want to stay here with Mommy. Yeah, well, I think your mom needs some rest right now. I'll bring you back later. Come on. Okay. Okay, you come back later. Okay? Okay, sweetheart. I love you. Goodbye, Mommy. Bye-bye. I thank you for being my brave little girl. And Travis, thank you. I can't tell you how much it meant for me to have both you and Bianca here. Ramona always brought out the best in people. I'll see you before I leave. Right. Come on, honey. Feeling better? A little. I'm so sorry about the way I acted at the cemetery. Oh, you put on quite a performance. What must people think? Uh, forget it. They know that you loved Mona very dearly and you're in great pain. Actually, I was... I was kind of pleased to see you were able to finally let go and allow yourself to grieve. My mother was always there. Always. My mother was the one constant in my life. Everybody else left. My father, army of husbands, even you left, you left town, but my mother stuck it out with me, and no matter how ugly or mean or impossible I was, my mother was always there to help me pick up the pieces and go on, and in a heartbeat, she's gone. I think Mona will always be around you. Watching, listening. As a matter of fact, I'm sure she's taught the entire heavenly choir the right intonation for saying, Erica, how could you? It's so nice to think that some things never change. You carry that thought right into your dreams. Oh. I don't think the sedative has taken. I'm not sleepy at all. Well, you get some rest or I'll have to darn have Dr. Joe back here and put you away for a week. <laughs> oh, you sound just like my mother. <laughs> my mother could have said it better. I'm not going to do without 
about you. You were always so wise about people. You always understood them so much better than I ever have. Dimitri, for example. We're divorced. We've gone our separate ways. Then why was he at the cemetery today? I know he loved you. He always did. And I know he wanted to say goodbye to you. Why did he speak to me? Is he still angry? Is he hurt? Should I call him? Should I send a note? Or should I leave bad enough alone? Tell me what to do, Mom, please. I don't have a clue. I'm lost without you. Lost, and I'm alone. I miss you so much. I miss you. <laughs>